Hey, it's Tom from WPWithTom.com, and in this video, I'll be covering how to use the Elementor Pro Pricing Table Widget. So before we dive in, I just wanted to say if you haven't already picked up Elementor Pro, I highly recommend that you do so. I'll have a link to it in the description if you want to support my channel. It's WPWithTom.com slash Elementor. I also wanted to mention that I'll be covering every single one of the Elementor Pro elements in videos and making a big playlist on how to use each of them. So be sure to subscribe for more of those videos. And with that out of the way, let's dive into the video. So the price table element is an awesome way to quickly add a pricing table that gets our viewers attention. So the first thing that we're going to do is go over, I'm actually going to add it down here and I'll add it in this pricing page. I'll just hit plus. And then we can either hit plus again, choose the structure, or we can just drag it over so we can go over here. And let's just search for price table. I'm going to then drag it in right here. And now we have our price table in place. So right now we only have one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create one by using the elements here on this page that I want it to look like basically. And then I'm going to duplicate them to make additional ones that look just like this one to save some time. So let's go through the process of doing that now. So here we have header and it says enter your title. So let's just call this package, for example. And you might want to have it like silver, gold, platinum. I'm just going to leave it as package and just run through the examples here. Here's a description. So right here you can actually change the sizes of the heading tag here. So I'm going to leave this tag as H3 in my case. And then I'm going to move down to where it says pricing. Right here we have our different currency options. So here we can change things from dollar to euro to bot to all different types of currencies here. I'm just going to leave it as dollar for this case. And then we can also change the price if we want. Maybe I'll make this one the good old $97 that everybody seems to charge. And then you can choose the format. So by default, it looks like this, but you can also add if it has a decimal. Let's just go like this. And then you can see the difference where the decimal is now up higher on the price. So that is how you would change that. I'm actually just going to go and leave it by default, but I'm going to actually not have any decimals in these prices to keep things looking a little cleaner in my opinion. So you can also put if it's on sale or not. So that will basically have a strike through next to it and you can choose the original price. So let's just call this 199 and I'll just get rid of that five. And then you can see now it says 97. That's how you would do that. I'm not going to put a sale price either in this case. And here you can choose the subscription price if it's a monthly yearly if it's lifetime i'm just going to put lifetime in this case and now we can go down to where it says features so within features we can change list items and icons so what we can do here is just click on this and right now the icon has this check mark if we want to do something else we can just click on that and we can see a ton of different options so let's just go and i'll make it this check mark with the square box around it instead there's lots of options here. If you want to scroll through them, you can find something you want, like thumbs up or check marks or anything in here. I'm just going to click insert. And now we have that square box. So if I wanted to, I can literally just go here and just copy, copy, and then delete, delete for the other two. And I'll just make this one say list item number two and list item number three. And then I'm just going to click update to save our progress here. But now you can see what it looks like. It's coming along a little bit. And if I wanted to make it look more like this website, I'm going to get into the, some of the styling here in a little bit. But let's go down to where it says footer. And here we can add our button text. So right now it says click here. I'll just make it say order now. And then if you wanted to add a link, this is where you would add it. If you click on this, you can choose to open it in a new window, which I like to do in some cases. Depending on what you're going for, I think you're probably going to want them to either go to a payment page on a new window or you would maybe want to redirect them to a different internal page on the site. So it really depends on what kind of link you have there. And it says this is text element below. So you would want to add something there if you want or you can just delete that. I'm going to just delete it. Then ribbon is what this is right here. It says popular and it says you can choose to show it or not. It's totally up to you. I think people generally put popular as their feature plan or the plan that's like in the middle tier rather than the lower end or the higher end. And it's up to you if you want to have this. I'm just going to leave it for the effect in this case. And then I'm just going to click on update. 
So right here we can move over to the style tab here at the top. It says background color. If you want to change this, you can. Let's just make this a bit of a different color to go more with the sites. You can see right here, it's a similar color to that up there. That is where you can change that. If you want to, you can then just click up here to close that. And then we have padding options right here. If you want to, you can add or decrease padding. I'm just going to show you what it does. So if I add 25, for example, you can see what it looks like, or you can add it by unchecking this link values together and maybe you have zero to the left uh, to the right and then you have zero to the bottom so it's going to look a little bit different depending on what you want to do I'm just going to link all the values and leave it at 25 here you might not even need to change this at all so then if you want to for the title color right now we have it on this white you can see what it looks like when you change that right there and what's being changed I'm going to leave that as is with a white color there you can also change the typography if you want. So let's just go and just say you want it to change it to this. We can then change the size as well. So you want to find something that works for you, but you also want to make sure it looks okay on different devices. So you can look at the responsive modes for tablets and mobile devices here as well. I'm going to just put it at 25 in this case. I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to X out of that as well. Submenu it says enter your description. You can change the text color and typography there if you want. I'm going to skip down to the pricing and right here it says background color. Let's just change that to see what it looks like and that is what it would look like. I'm just going to hit clear to go back. I'm not going to change any of these backgrounds going on but I did want to show you how you can change this up top and I am going to change this ribbon here as well. So let's just go through these right now. If you want to you can also change the size of the currency symbol. I kind of like it to be a little bit bigger so people are knowing what currency they're paying in when they see it I would like something like this maybe 65 and I do like it to the left side because that's how you would normally write US dollars to the left side so if we continue on I'm just going to scroll down to where it says features and from here we can change our list item typography or color so maybe you would want this to be a little bit darker you can do that if that's what you would like I'm just going to leave that as is here and you can also change the alignment if you want. I think center looks good because everything else is center in this case. And then we can add a divider between each one. So we have this light row right here. You might want to make that a little bit darker. So let's just go with this right here. And I'm going to then change the weight of it. So if you want it to, you can make it one so it's a little thinner. You can make it larger or thicker like that. I think one or two looks pretty good. I'm going to leave it as two in this case. And I'm just going to move down here. If you wanted to, you can add more changes to these features here with the width and the gap. I'm just going to leave it as is here and I'll go down to the footer. Within this section, you can change different things. I'm actually going to change the button background color right here. So right now, if you see up here, we have this bluish purple kind of color going on on the site. Maybe I'll make it something more like this and I'll change it so it looks a little bit closer to that color up there and I'll leave the order now button in place. So I'm going to close that and go to the ribbon. So this ribbon we have as green background text with white text on it. I'm actually going to make the background color white text and then I'm going to make the text color more aligned with this right here. So I'll make it more of a pinkish color right here and have it say popular just like that. So that is how we could get this to look a little bit more like what we have on our site. You'd probably want to grab the hex codes and make sure it's the same in reality and just paste it in right here from one section to the other. But I just wanted to get it close so it looks pretty good here for you. I'll just click update now and now we can move on to the advanced tab. And from here I'm just going to go down to where it says border right here. And what I'm going to do is I'll go to box shadow and I'm going to add a nice little box shadow here. So I'm just going to go five for horizontal I'll go 5 in vertical here and then I'll make 10 blur and 0 for the spread and that is how we're going to have this nice little box shadow effect around the outside here looks pretty cool I'm just going to click update here if you want to you can also go into some motion effects so you can have different effects as far as animations go I'm not going to go into any of that right now but if you want to that is an option to add that here and now what I'm going to do since I'm pretty happy with how it looks overall I'm just going to then go right here right click and I'm just going to then hit add new column and I'll do the same thing add new column and then I'll just right click on it copy right click paste and then I will paste it again 
and then you can literally just go in here and start editing it as needed so if you wanted the pricing to be different on this one right here you would just go 197 and I could go over this one go to pricing and I could have this be uh, 297 for example and that is how you would start editing it and making changes to each of the elements here within this list for the price table so I hope this video was helpful and that you enjoyed the video on the pricing table widget if you did please feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more elementor tutorials thanks for viewing and have a wonderful day